This week I learned I just don't have enough time in my life anymore for artistic douchebaggery. Hey, what's up, bookworms, and Merry Christmas. If you guys celebrate, if you don't, well, happy holidays, whatever it is that you guys appreciate doing this time of year. I want to wish you that. But guys, we are here for a very special holiday edition of the weekly update. It's a little late because, as you know, if you have kids, these uh, these things can kind of get away from you. So I meant to do this like two days ago, honestly, recorded two days ago, but this, this just got away from me. And then you know, once it rolled over into Christmas Eve, I thought, well, there won't be much going on today. And guys, it's the first time I've stopped and it's, it's, it's very late. It's very late right now. And we still have to put a bed together for my kids. But guys, you're not here to hear about that. You're here to hear about what happened this week, guys. Let's begin like usual. Let's talk about what am I reading? Yes, I am still working on Ashes of Man by Mr. Rocchio. I'd say I'm only about 40%-ish into it. It's it, no, no. Oops, look at that. No problem with uh, with the book at all. Not at all. Uh, it, it started a little slow, but if you knew the way that Kingdoms of Death ended, uh, you knew that there was going to be some recovery period, obviously, and some hangover after what happened with that. But uh, it, it's it's picking up speed really well. It's just this is really just guys. If I haven't had time to record, I haven't had very much time to read really. So it's just been a a, a rough week with me because uh, I was finishing up everything at work because I am off until like January third or fourth. I'm not even sure which. But you know, trying to get all the stuff done before you leave a job like mine, it's 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 rough. You know, trying to wrap that all up and basically uh, everybody else was out on holiday and that last day I was working, it was just me trying to do four people's jobs. So exciting stuff, guys. So that's kind of uh, taken away from my time. But as far as this book goes, uh, yeah, uh, I think it's picking up speed where I'm at right now. And I think the full plot is just now getting underway. And everyone has told me this book is really back heavy. And I'm excited to see what Christopher does next, because I'm sure it will end in lots of misery and tears, because that seems to be what he does. You know, he seems to be of that ilk. Uh, I did finish a book, though. Me and my oldest did finish The Lightning Thief by uh, uh, Mr. Rick Riordan. This is the first book in Percy Jackson and the Olympians, and I've talked about it recently, about how my kid's just full on into Greek mythology. So much so that the whole time I'm reading this, he's like, that's not how it actually happened. I'm like, oh, okay, Brindisius. I had no idea that you were there. But anyway, it's been a lot of fun. He loved it. Uh, he's quite, quite happy with it. We are going to continue with it. And uh, he didn't pick, figure out everything. There were a couple things at the end that really surprised him. And uh, it's a lot of fun, guys. It really is. It's not anything I think that, uh, you know, if you're my age, uh, reading this for the first time, it, it's probably not going to be anything that you're going to get anything out of, really. You might think it is a much way lower than your reading level, but it's fun. I mean, I, I think if you like a, a Harry Potter, I don't see you having a problem with this. I think Harry Potter is a little more adult in this because it's just really, really young kids. But I think if you have a younger kid that you want to read this with, I think it's a great, great idea. And I'm excited to see how it continues because I had a lot more fun with it than I thought I would. I said I tried reading it like a, you know, a decade plus ago and I was just like, ah, did much different reader back then. But I really did expect this time to kind of like read it and be like just face planning and just like like groaning out loud. I didn't. I had a lot of fun with it. It's a lot of fun. I've actually chuckled out loud a couple of times while I was reading to him. So uh, I'm having a good time. He's having a great time. And uh, we shall continue. But yeah, that's pretty much all I really did read this week, guys. Let's go ahead and move along to what am I going to read? Well, now I am going to continue on Ashes of Man. My goal is to finish that before the end of the year, because we do have a lot of things going on right at the beginning of January. But uh, I did go ahead. I've got the rest of the books that I'm planning to read this year in my hand right here, guys. So I did also kind of, I like to stagger a sci-fi and a fantasy book. I, I do that quite often. So I did pick up the next Driss book, which is The Halfling's Gem, the end of the Icewind Dale trilogy. And guys, I don't know how to say this. I'm having such a good time with Drist. And I know if you're if you're the first time you're tuning in, you're seeing me talk about Percy Jackson and Drist, you probably think, oh, this guy likes reading like little junior high things. <laughs> it might seem like that. I think when you're reading something as heavy as Sun Eater, uh, I, and I just finished reading Robin Hobb, I think that, you know, you get to some of these uh, these breezy novels and it's quite fun. Now, this is very clearly, like I said, my palate cleanser series I'm kind of doing, kind of like my replacement for Dresden Files because I used to read Dresden Files between these big epic fantasy books. It really helped me, like, clear my mind. So I, I think I'm going to be doing that with Drist. I, I'm having a great time. I love the character. I think it's bullshit that Mr. Salvatore has separated Drist and Guinevar right now, but 
<laughs> I digress. I'm pretty sure they will be back together soon enough. But uh, yeah, I, I'm really interested to see if he can stick to landing this. Because I felt like as much as I liked Dark Elf, one of the things I didn't feel like he did was stick to landing at the end of the third book. So I'll be curious to see if he can do that here. But I do like the way it has started off. Has some really kind of laugh out loud moments uh, with uh, with Wolfgar and Driss kind of traveling in their little companionship right now. It's 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 real fun. I'm I'm enjoying where it's going, and I will continue that. Hopefully, like I said, to plan to finish that before the end of the year. The only other book I've got after that, guys, to finish before the end of the year, is this Robin Hobb novella, the Willful Princess and the Pipal Prince. But guys, that's a that's a one sitting read. I'll do that without a problem. Like I said, I could be doing that on New Year's Eve, and I'm not gonna be worried about finishing it. And after that, guys, all I'm going to be doing, and this isn't anything I have to finish, it's something we're just going to keep doing. We did start uh, Sea of Monsters. That's the next Percy Jackson book last night. Uh, this one's a little shorter, it looks like, than Lightning Thief. Because, uh, you know, one sitting, and I, I think we were already like 10% through the book. So, uh, yeah, I, this is going to be a series I think we're going to fly right through. And like I've said, I've already had people already asking me, are you going to be doing, you know, uh, I think Heroes of Olympus. Is that what the next one's called? Next series called? It's just going to depend. If he really loves all five of these books and he wants to keep going, yeah, I'll definitely keep going because I think it's going to be a lot of fun for something else to just like, like I said, to first uh, create some core memories, you know, uh, together. Because I think that it's one of those things that I, I look at and I say, I don't know how much he really appreciates me reading to him. But I know that if I'd had a parent that read to me when I was younger, it would definitely be something that I still think about and appreciate. So I think, guys, uh, he's going to be unlike me. He's going to be an audiobook listener because he much prefer, prefers me to read it to him than to read it himself. So uh, I don't know if that's a testament to, hey, because I do fun voices and stuff like that. Or if it's just more that, you know, hey, uh, I don't have to actually read it. I don't know. I don't know. But I'll take any time that I can spend with my oldest uh, like that because, you know, uh, they're growing so fast, man. It goes it goes really, really quick. So how about a little bit of this week on the channel, guys? Did have some some things going on. Kind of tried working on putting out a video like every other day because I knew it was going to be kind of busy. Uh, but we did do Saturday nights number Saturday Saturday night nights number five. That's fun to try to say fast. Say that one time fast. Saturday night nights five. I had uh, Jordan from iWizard. Uh, awesome, awesome guy. I love him to death. He is someone I would consider a personal friend. Theo from the Rekindle Reader, one of my Biggest writer dies. He sent me that Dune Folio Society edition, and we've become uh, fast friends since then. I think that uh, that's one of the coolest and most down-to-earth people I have met in the BookTube community. He has a great channel. I hope you will check it out. I'm going to link all their channels down below. And then it was the first time I actually got to speak with Tori from Tori Talks. And she is just delightful, big Red Rising fan like me. We talked about Red Rising quite a bit in there. She's got this really awesome Howler's Beanie that I've got to get. I've got to get one of those. But uh, yeah, she is just delightful. And I enjoyed having all three of them on the show. Felt like our conversations were all over the place, just like you would expect in a Saturday Night Nights episode. But I think we all had a good, good time. And uh, thank you guys for uh, joining us uh, live and joining into the chat and asking us questions and making comments and all those fun things. And like I said, I hope you will check their channels out because they all have amazing platforms. And I'm excited to see what happens with their channels in the future because I think they will just continue to expand on what they've been doing and, uh, and, and just create great communities on their own. And I'm happy to be a part of it. And I'm glad that they were able to join me for that call because it was a heck of a good time. I did one of my my negative videos, guys, which is uh, my most disappointing books of 2022. And I think what I say in that is like, you guys know I don't like to do negative videos. And I know with a title like that, it feels like you're going to be really negative. What I say is I don't like to use the word disappointing, but I mean, that's, that's what it is. Uh, I, there's books that I felt like disappointed me, books that let me down. And I say in that, I don't feel like these are necessarily bad books, per se. They're just some books that maybe didn't give me what I was looking for, or they just weren't for me. You know, that's going to happen from time to time. We're all going to have books that we consider a little disappointing, you know. And some of the some of the picks on there, people have agreed. I've had people come in there and say, like, these are all great books. You know, it's that's going to happen. Again, guys, there's nothing more subjective than reading, except maybe music. That might be about it. So uh, I always think that it's a good conversation starter, and it's never anything where I'm like, hey, this book ruined my life, <laughs> you know? It just sometimes they just they just don't work for me. They don't work for you, and sometimes they work for others. I think that's a fun conversation to have, and that's why I create videos like that, so we can talk about those things. You know what? Still go out and get us a, a nice coffee together and, uh, and, and hang out and be pals afterwards. It's always the goal. Also, the goal is to plan ahead. Now, I have always done my TBR videos on this channel and seasons, you know, summer, spring, fall, like that. 
uh, I had had a lot of requests of people saying they would like me to do those monthly and talk about each book a little more. So what I did was just my January of 2023 TBR. Now I'm gonna try with January, February, March, doing separate videos. And if you guys like that format, I will keep it. If you guys don't, I'll go back to the old one. Again, criticism doesn't bother me. That's how I learn what you guys want. Because in the end, I want to do what you guys want me to do. So uh, with this, what I did was I would talk about each book. I would give the synopsis. I would read like the back, uh, you know, what they put on the dust jacket, trying to be too spoilery. Even though a lot of people have already kind of chimed at me saying, for yourself, stop reading the back dust jackets of Robin Hobb books because they have been, you know, known to be spoilery. So uh, no taken. I will see if I can get to uh, some just some vague non-spoiler plot synopsis, maybe from some people who have read it or something. Maybe they can do something like that for me for those videos when I talk about her books in February uh, through October of next year, because that is, is uh, in the plans, is to read one Robin Hop book until I am done with Realm of the Elderlings. But uh, I enjoy the new format. Something else I changed in it is I changed the order, showing the order that I plan to read each book that month. So uh, it's always open for uh, interpretation for these things, uh, what, what you guys are looking for, and if uh, if that's something that I would like to continue doing. But I had a good time with that first one. And uh, if you want to go on reading in January and you want to join me for one of those things, there are plenty of read-alongs that are mentioned in there. Uh, Red Rising, we're going to be doing a Red Rising read-along with me. I'm going to be joining someone else's uh, Giles Christian Arthurian Tales read-along. So uh, yeah, if you guys want to do that, hop on the Discord, check out those schedules, and uh, check out that video. Then I finally got back to my song, of ice and fire content. Now I did fire and blood a while back and even further before that I did my why you should read a song of ice and fire. Uh, spoiler, because it's awesome. Uh, but uh, I, look guys, this is a series that's ex just incredibly dear to me. I mean, it is everything. I have just been worshiping this series for 20 plus years, long before the television show came out. So I can try to be hipster about that. <laughs> Not really, I'm just saying that like I was obsessed with that world long before the rest of the world even knew who the Starks were, you know? It's just one of those things that will always be special to me. So when I'm doing my Song of Ice and Fire content, I'm planning to take my time because it's so important to me. I wanna make sure that I do it right. It's never that anything that I just wanna kinda of get out for content. So that's why it's taken me so long to do it. Now I didn't do it when I started the channel because I felt like everything was so negative because the show would just ended right when I started the channel. And I didn't want every single Song of Ice and Fire video I did to be about why the show sucked. So I felt like enough time's gone by uh, there's kind of a good vibe going right now because people did enjoy House of the Dragon. So I said I thought it was a good time to finally get back into that. So I did Fire and Blood like right before the TV show came out, House of, Dra House of the Dragon. And with this one, I just said, you know what? I got this really awesome holiday sweater, <laughs> you know, of winter is coming. It'd be a great time to go ahead and do my A Game of Thrones review. And I had a great time with it. Uh, it's a little longer than most reviews, but guys, I can't talk about that world that George created briefly. It's just not in my DNA. I can't do it. In fact, I'm looking at that almost a half hour long review, and there's so much stuff that I feel like I still want to talk about, and I didn't. I mean, there's characters I didn't even mention by name in it that I would love to talk about. So I presented the idea of maybe doing a spoiler talk or maybe a spoiler discussion if other people want to do it. I don't know. It just kind of depends on feedback with that one. But uh, yeah, I, I love doing it. I love doing my long, obnoxious, three-minute long reading excerpt because it's so hard for me to pick the best quotes from that book. But uh, it's just an amazing book. And I, I say in that video, I think it is the best book one in a fantasy series ever, even over Fellowship. It's just that good. I think it's about as perfect of a beginning of a fantasy series as you can have. And what's amazing about it is that's not even the best book in the series. So that just tells you how special that world is to me. I can appreciate if you don't want to read it because it's not complete. I can appreciate if you don't want to read it because you don't like how the show ended. But for me, it will always be something special. And it is that great in spite of it not being complete. That is literally the only complaint I have about that series is that it's not complete. And to me, that doesn't take away from the greatness that we have gotten for it. One other thing I did this week, and it was actually was a, gosh, it might have been two weeks ago, but they just got it up. I want to say I did have a guest appearance on another show. Now, uh, Gabe and Spencer over at the Fantasy Files podcast had me on, and we had like no real topic. We're just going to see what kind of happens. There's a little segment called Creator's Corner where they just talk to other content creators. And we talked for three hours, guys, and it was so much fun. We talked about everything from uh, just you know, video games and books to TV shows to cars, you name it. Uh, and we talked about why Brent Weeks is the worst. <laughs> All those things, but uh, those those two guys are just perfect gentlemen. I think they're just so fun and so easy to talk to. 
And I hope you guys will, will listen to that. It just took me back to the time when me and Danny, my old podcast partner, we had that podcast and we would have two, three hour episodes. And it was just so much fun. I, I do miss podcasting a lot. It was a lot less work. I'll tell you guys that, you know, because there's no uh, worrying about video editing or, you know, images or any of that stuff. You just turn on the microphone and sh- yep, upload. You're, you're done, you know. So uh, it, it's, it's just one of those kind of things where I can appreciate where those guys are coming from. And I think they got a great, great layout for their show. It's really, really great. So I'm going to link the video and I'm going to link their podcast. I hope you guys will check it out because they are just great guys. And I think you guys will enjoy what they are talking about because they have a lot of the stuff, a lot of the series that I talk about on this channel, they have episodes about those books and those series. So check them out if you can. Fantasy Files Podcast. And I want to thank those two gentlemen for uh, having me on. It was a blast. I hope we get to do it again. I would love to talk to you guys again because, uh, yeah, again, it, I, three hours went by so quick. It was a school night or work night, and I didn't even care. I was just having that much of a good time talking with them. And I hope we can do it again in the future. Now, guys, I do have some next week plans. Uh, there are some things that are kind of up in the air. Uh, like I said, just kind of depends on how things go. But hopefully, after Christmas is over, things will get back to normal. But I do want to make sure I'm finishing up the reads that I have currently going because I currently have like four books going at the same time. want to make sure that I can get that stuff gone before the new year The new year for our Red Rising reread, as I like to call it. But there are some ideas that I have. Now, of course, it is going to be time for my top 10 books of 2022. Usually one of my more popular videos for the year. Uh, I think that uh, everybody kind of knows where I'm going with things, and you might, but I think there are going to be some few surprises on there for you, but it was very, very tough to narrow it down this year, so much so that I think I have five or six honorable mentions, so I'm trying not to derfy it too much and be like, here's my top 10, all right, number 17, you know, but I I do have some that I say just just barely missed the cut, but getting it down to just 10 was tough because, guys, I don't count rereads. I only allow one book from each author. And I had some specific authors this year that had multiple books that just were awesome. So it was a very, very tough list to make. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to talk to you guys about them because uh, I'm curious to see what I'm going to say. I will be doing some sci-fi content. Now, I am going to be finishing up The Expanse next year. And now I have Red Rising and I have uh, what Sun Eater is a sci-fi series that are ongoing. So obviously not going to be part of this conversation. But really the video that I want to make is going to be sci-fi... Yeah sci-fi series that I want to read after I finish The Expanse. So I'll be finishing The Expanse in the fall, and then I'll be ready to start a new sci-fi series. And I'm going to talk about five of them that I think will be the top contenders for which series, not just book, but series, that I begin next. So uh, I know that fantasy and horror probably are two to one over sci-fi on this channel. And it's something that I've always said I wanted to correct, but it just seemed like I had so much stuff ongoing I didn't want to start new series, especially because a lot of sci-fi series can get, uh, well, a little long-winded. Let's just put it that way. But I do have five that, in particular that I want to talk about that I'd be most interested in trying after I finish The Expanse. And here's the kicker. You guys' feedback is going to be the one that helps me choose which one I do. It's not a poll or anything like that, but I would like to hear your comments about which of these five that I got to talk about that you guys might think would be the best idea for me to start after I finish The Expanse. I cannot wait to finish that series, and I cannot wait to talk about some of these new series that I have, you know, kind of just waiting on deck, if you will. And then, guys, if you didn't know, uh, as of this recording, I have crossed my year-end goal of 85,000 subscribers. So, awesome number to hit. I had two goals this year internally. I wanted to cross 10 million lifetime views on the channel. We, We crossed that in November. And uh, 85,000 subscribers was my internal goal. We did cross it. So got a week to spare. Really exciting time. So uh, it's one of those things where in the end, your subscriber count doesn't really matter. It's just a number. But it's always fun. I am very goal-oriented. So I like to see continuous growth on the channel, even with some wonky stuff that goes on with our content creator overlords. But uh, thank you, guys. It's really, really great. So to say thank you, I plan on doing a 85,000 sub uh, slash year end live stream next week because I will be on vacation like I said so I'll be doing a live stream those are just kind of an AMA ask me anything you want and I'll try to see if I can answer it and that's always one of those things like as long as you guys are talking to me uh, it's not just like the same three people asking questions over and over again I'll keep going I usually average about three hours on these so uh, yeah my kids are here so they might bust in and surprise everybody but you know anything can happen 
uh, when you're doing a live stream, right? But uh, I can't wait to do it. And I want to thank you guys uh, already, like I said, for helping me cross those two goals this year. It's really, really great. And I'm glad you guys have decided to be a part of it. I'm so happy that you are here. But guys, before I go, there's a couple of TV and movie talk things I want to talk about. And let's just do the bad news first. The bad news. <laughs> we'll say it's, uh, the, the negative is kind of the bad news here. Uh, Rafe Juckins. Heard of him. Uh, he's the showrunner for The Wheel of Time. Uh, I don't know what the interview was. I think it was with Dragon Mount. He was doing an interview. And my buddy Narg, if you don't know who Narg the Trollic is, well, then if you know, you know. Great, great guy. But he posted a, a clip from an interview he was having where Rafe Jenkins, this is, this is verbatim here. He says, 70% of people who have read all 14 books have said that they think the show is as good or better than the books. 70%. Let that sink in. Yeah, uh, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I think it's just after a while, you just got to think that some people are just living in such an echo chamber that they can't hear anything. And this is why, guys, I said that uh, well, I wonder if feedback is going to make them you know, course correct anything. Absolutely not. I don't expect anything to change with season two. In fact, I expect it to be worse. And here's the thing is like I know that people are going to throw it in my face and be like, oh, well, you know, you said you liked it. Well, here's the thing. I try to remain positive. Madison and I are very positive people. We don't like to just focus in on the negative. I know that's what everybody on YouTube seems to want is a negative, but I have a very, very positive platform. And I try to see the good in things. I try to look at Wheel of Time as, well, if you're adapting it, this is kind of something. And then it just got worse and worse and worse to a point where we couldn't we couldn't do it anymore. Like we aren't even planning on doing as will turns for season two because we just we don't even know if we want to watch it. And yeah, I, I I don't know how just just tone deaf you have to be to really believe that seventy percent of people who have read all fourteen books love your show or think it's better than the books. I just don't understand what they're saying. So. Um, you know, I think it's just one of those things where you kind of fail upward because not only did he say that, it was also announced he's going to be the showrunner for the new series, God of War. Yeah, isn't this exciting, guys? Isn't this just exciting? I don't understand how people can do stuff like this and just continue to just keep failing upwards. It's amazing. Uh, obviously, God of War is an amazing, amazing series of games that I've played for almost 20 years now, I think. So uh, I've been on board since the very first release on the PlayStation 2. So it's something that I think is always thought this has you know cinematic value. This could be something really great on the big or small screen. And, but you know, right off the bat, he says, well, we're going to skip all the Greek mythology stuff, and we're going to start right with the Norse reboot that they did, uh, soft reboot that they did in 2018. Okay, I mean, look, I know Norse stuff is really hot right now. Uh, it really is. I mean, you look at like uh, with the Northman, you look at obviously the Thor movies and stuff. So people are really interested in that. Vikings, Last Kingdom. I'm interested in that. Vinland Saga. These are things that is really, really well received right now. But first, I was like, why would you start there? I mean, that's really like at the, at the when you've got old Kratos. I don't understand why you wouldn't start with all these properties of all this Greek mythology, all this stuff. But I, I don't. I, as soon as I saw Rafe Jenkins name attached to it, I was like, I ain't interested. So there it is, guys. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, Amazon just they make decisions that you just don't understand. But clearly, it seems like they're very, very happy with what Rafe Jenkins has done with Wheel of Time. And uh, if that's the case, well, I don't know what else to say. Hey, it's their money. Let them do with it what they will. Uh, Avatar 2, guys, I did not go see it yet. It's not a I don't want to see a thing. I would very much like to see it. My my 10-year-old wants to see it. Uh, it's, to me, it was just it's three hours and 15 minutes long. And I don't want to sit there in a theater that long with my kids because it's hard to get them to sit still for like a two-hour movie. Three hours and 15 minutes. But uh, here's the thing. Is I've heard amazing things. And here's the deal. Even people who've spent a decade plus trashing this movie for existing, saying no one wants to see this, even they're kind of like, damn, that's pretty good. You know, so I don't know. I haven't seen it, so I can't really say. I'm just saying I haven't heard anybody unless they're really just like nitpicking. And it's something that like, if you already hated the first movie, they say that this isn't going to be the movie that changes your mind. But I've had a lot of people who are like, look, I'm going to go into it with an open mind. and been like, it was actually really good. You know, I, I saw what Brian Lee Durfee was saying, like he's amazed that, you know, James Cameron's able to take, you know, CGI pixels and make him, like, be teary-eyed, you know, for this family. So I'm, I'm excited to see it when I finally do get to see it, but I don't think I'm going to get to see it 
at the theater, which is really, really a shame because I think it probably is a movie that needs to be seen in the cinema. But, you know, did buy an 85-inch, you know, 4K TV for this reason. So hopefully uh, I'll just wait and, uh, you know, get that 4K version when it comes out. And hopefully it'll be close to the same. Maybe we could break it into two parts or something for my kids. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad to see that it's being so well-received because, like I said, I learned a long time ago, guys, I don't doubt James Cameron. Whenever, every time I doubt James Cameron, he makes me look like an idiot. So I stopped doing it a long, long time ago. So I do hope to see it. I just don't know when real quick before I got on about real quick because I don't know if I can do this I kind of mentioned in the cold open at the beginning that uh, I don't have time for artistic douchebaggery anymore guys I know a lot of people in last week's video I talked about severance on Apple TV and everyone was saying well you like that man if you watch Mr. Robot and I'm like well I watched the first season of Mr. Robot and I liked it a lot and I fell off in the second season. It just wasn't grabbing me anymore and a lot of people said like yeah, yeah you just got to kind of struggle through that and then it gets amazing and so I tried again and I started over at the beginning of season two. I think I made it like five episodes. And I just said, guys, this, this show is, it's just not good for me. I just, it's one of those things where I can't think of the showrunner's name right now. But it almost feels like because the first season was such a success, it feels like that showrunner started reading his own press and he started believing his own hype that he decided to go like full art house with it and thinking, let me just put as much like over the top, long, slow zoom in shots as I can of a character staring off. I mean, I think in those five episodes, I had at least 20 minutes worth of someone just like sitting on a couch, staring at nothing, and a two minute long slow zoom with this, this really loud, obnoxious sound effect or song. It just, it's just not a show for me, guys, I don't think. It's a shame because I think that first season was one of the best first seasons of a TV show I've ever seen, but I felt like it did like Heroes. Remember Heroes? The first season was great, and then it was just like, what are you guys even doing? That's how I feel with this. And I know I still got people that will be like, but season three or four are amazing. Well, you know what? You shouldn't have fucked around in season two and lost your audience. Because if you look at the statistics for the show, the crowd, the audience disappeared when I did at the same time. And the ratings for that show at the last season were one of the lowest rated shows that USA Network's ever had. So I don't say that that means anything. I'm just saying that you made your own bet. That's why people wouldn't finish your show because of what you did in season two. So I tried, guys. I tried for you. And it's just, it's just not going to work for me. I think Rami Malek is incredibly talented. He's obviously got a bright, bright future. The guy's already got an Academy Award in his trophy case. So I think he's going to be doing fine. But that show, it's just not going to happen for me. But guys, that's all I have for this week. Obviously, it is Christmas. I hope you guys are spending a lot of time with your loved ones. You're making sure that you're appreciating those times. If you got kids, hang on to it, man, because it goes so, so quick. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get back out there with my kids because uh, we've got lots of things to do before uh, we start actually opening presents in the morning. So guys, let me know how your week went. Let me know what you're watching, listening to, reading, playing, any of those fun things. What are you doing for Christmas? No wrong answers. I hope you guys have a very, very happy Christmas and a very safe new year. And I will talk to you in the comments below. Take care. Thank you.